Welcome to the Kim Sunshine Show with your host, Kim Sunshine, your perpetual business owner who loves to talk to local business owners. And now, here's Kim. Hi, this is Kim Sunshine, and welcome to the Kim Sunshine Show. I have a very special guest with me today, Miss Nadine King. She runs um, a nonprofit in town called Christmas Come True. And she really is bringing Christmas to a lot of families in Flagler County. So how are you today, Nadine? Good. Happy New Year. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. So Good to see you. Oh, I know. And you look oh. fabulous, by the way. Thank you. All this extra work you're doing has been, because <laughs> we just got out of this <laughs> it's season. It's all good for me. It's all good for you. It's keeping it. Listen, I, I can tell you this, working um, keeps you young. Yes. Because it really keeps your mind going and key, like there's people that I meet all the time who are like, yeah, I'm retired, I'm bored. And I'm like, well, you know, there's great there's places to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> so now how, when did Christmas Come True start? So I am going on my 15th 15th year. year. Wow. It's amazing. I just, I cannot believe it every time I say that. But um, we just finished our 14th year of helping the families here in Flagler County. And as you know, it all stays here. Yep. So we help the families here in our neighborhood. Well, that's me. My heart belongs to Flagler County. Yeah. You know, as far as my real estate, anything that I do, I just, um, I don't know, maybe it's a loyalty thing. I guess it's like where I live, it's where I've, you know, my roots are here. I Well, my roots from what I've dug into the ground is here. And um you know, I love, love, love our area. That's why I chose it. Yeah. So now when you moved here, what was the population of, of uh, Palm Coast? Because I'm sure you had to know, like 15 years ago. So let's see, we're, that's what, 2008, 2007? Well, there were less than 100,000 people. Yeah. Sure. Well, I just don't remember offhand what it was. I just know that, uh, you know, in 2008 and 2009, when we went into that deep depression mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of families were going homeless and losing their jobs, construction stopped mm -hmm. and everything just fell apart. And that was, I knew that I needed to do something again, again and start Christmas come true. So again. how did you know? Like what, like what? Okay. Cause I know I'm doing this business and it's different than what I was doing. And, um, one, it's my passion, but two, I kind of felt led by God to do it, to help people. Absolutely. So what, so what was the, <clears throat> what happened in your case that, that, so actually in Virginia, many years ago, many, mm -hmm. many years ago, mm -hmm. I had started Christmas come true. So I had actually been there and uh, was in the restaurant business. And I had a friend of mine and one night we were talking mm -hmm. and uh, I said, you know, what, what, it, why can't we help the families here? There's some major things that were happening back then. Mm -hmm. um, the economy. Yes, was, that is a big factor. Really crashing around mm -hmm. them. And so we did, we pulled it all together. Well, being in the restaurant business, you could go to your vendors and ask them sure. for turkeys and for sure. vegetables and for, you know, oh, we knew yeah. a lot of people. So everybody came together. My restaurant uh, clientele came and helped us wrap presents and helped us get. So this was in order. Virginia. So this was in Virginia. And what part of Virginia? Um, Virginia beach, Virginia beach. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So, so I lived so in Virginia that. for a minute. And so Virginia beach is beaches by the military base. Mm -hmm. So you probably had, were in you? Norfolk. Yep. Virginia Norfolk beach area. area. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So we did that. And then, um, I ended up going home for a time and, uh, met my husband got married and um, we eventually moved down here full time. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew that this was the time to do it again. This has all been a God movement calling thing. Um, I promised him many, many years ago that this is what I was going to do. And he put it heavy on my heart to begin again and start it. So that's what I did. So when you moved down here now, you didn't have those connections like you I had, had up nobody. in Virginia. <laughs> so I so, had and, nobody. I had, you know, my husband and I were basically uh, here part time. And I don't think I got to meet your husband ever. So no. I'm sorry that I never got to meet him. He sounds like he's a fabulous guy. And if he was able to walk beside you, he must be a very, very good man. Oh, he was. He was. 
So at any rate, um, we started it and on a shoestring. And so what I did was I got into the car. Okay. And I went to all of the little businesses in the area. Mm-hmm. And I said, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Mm-hmm. And that's um, why Nadine King knows everybody in town. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hustling. I mean, that's that's what we call it today. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, hustling's bad. But when you have to, when you go out and whatever business you're in, um, and especially with a nonprofit and go around and actually meet and greet everybody in the community that that's hustling right there. Yeah. And, you know, the thing was, is that a lot of these businesses were struggling to just keep open. Right. And so for them to be able to donate something or help us in some way was very right. special. Yeah, so, because the whole area was affected in oh that gosh, way. Yeah. Well, you know, there's the principle that, and I have to go back to the Bible from what I believe is the principle of reaping and sowing. And we see that in karma, you, you know, what you, what you put out there is what you get back. Well, that's the same thing. If you put an apple seed into the ground, it's going to grow to be an apple seed. So our goal is always to put good seeds into the ground so that they grow up. But, um, but yeah, so, so I would have to say there were probably a lot of people in the area who were struggling and were eager to have that place to sow a good seed that was going to do something good. So tell us more about Christmas Come True. So there you are, getting the people to um, to help you with your vision and your mission to make sure that all the children get Christmas. And they did. And they you did. Know, and so we had a charity ball, and we um, we just did any kind of event. One of my favorite events is the when you um, hooked up with Mezzaluna to do the golf course, the golfing at the the conservatory. So now is that an annual event that That you're doing with Mezzaluna Pizza? In Mm -hmm. September. It's uh, the third week of September. um, We have our golf tournament. And and Mezzaluna Pizza is located, um, they have one in like near Halifax Plantation and Plantation Bay on Old Dixie Highway. Mm -hmm. They have another one over... Um, by Publix that's on Beltaire, the one that's closest to Target. And then they have their largest location is in European Village. And one of the things we're very thankful, it's a family-owned business. They're local, and they do employ a lot of people. Yes. And I think, I don't know if she's still doing it on Sundays, but Mama will do lasagna sometimes on Sundays. And, yeah, uh, but, yeah, it's, awesome. it's really good pizza, really good food. So, so yeah, support the... One of the things that I always encourage people to do is support the businesses who are supporting um, the things that are helping our community. And, you know, it's people like Nadine King who volunteer their time and she organizes a a lot of volunteers to come together to um, to be that glue that holds a community together. So I'm so thankful that you do that. So so how many families did you get to help that very first year? So we did 54 families. The That's first a year. lot. Yeah, that That's was a, a lot, lot for, for the very first year. And we put it together, I think it was in three months. Wow. Wow. So and I there was such a big September, need. And by December, we had already gotten um, the charity ball together. And uh, we had been members at the Hammock Beach Resort. Mm-hmm. And so we had their Christmas tree was our very first Christmas tree to put the wish cards on. Aww. So we handmade, I mean, I literally was sitting in my <laughs> guest bedroom, you know, putting this organization together out of our guest bedroom. That's fantastic. And so we were there, I was there for, I think, three years. And then we had a little store in Virginia, um, in Flagler Beach. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we left that and ended up on 14th Street. Flagler Beach. Mm-hmm. That was donated to us as an office space for four years. Oh wow! The gentleman that owned that building, and um, yeah, so that's wonderful. And that he was, was sowing amazing. wonderful, wonderful seed. Now, when we hear that the first year you you help serve fifty four home uh, families or children, and are you counting by fifty four indiv- families? Families. So, so some of them have multiple children. Yeah, so oh, there were wow. over a hundred children that very first year. So fast forward, that was. 14 years ago, this past Christmas in 2022, how many families did you get to help? So we helped 158 families this year. Wow. And and that's uh, 
458 children plus. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So we, so when we look back and we see 54 families and 156, we can't get disappointed to say that Nadine has not grown with our community. The need was much, much different back then. I mean, there was so much need and you were there to fill that. You know, the, the best thing would be that families don't need your services, right. but the truth of the matter is there are all kinds of there scenarios and situations where even in a thriving economy and when everything is going good, there are still people who are falling through the cracks or situations that are unique. Like you were telling me, um, may I share some, I, like, we don't know, I don't know any of the names. So some of the situations, um, oh, yeah. like grandparents taking care of, of little babies, um, or children like in their seventies and eighties and they're on a fixed income and they're just not able to, to provide for those kids. And that's where Nadine comes in and is a, a support to them. You know, there's other situations where there's single moms who are unable to um, work because they have to stay home to take care of the babies. And by the time you, you know, are paying for daycare and, and working, it doesn't, the money doesn't, it doesn't equal out. It's called the system and it can get you stuck. And right. that's where Nadine comes in to make sure that these children have Christmas. And, um, and we also have a store called Begin Again Home Goods. And so we have furniture, gently used furniture that is donated there. We have a lot of beds that are, you know, people that have barely used these mm -hmm. twin beds or queen beds. And so they donate them to us. And so one of our uh, objectives is to make sure that no parent and no child especially is, doesn't have a bed doesn't have bedding. Oh, that's Make so sure beautiful. that they have sheets. That's so so we've, I mean, we've just given out hundreds of beds since uh, the last several years, hundreds of beds. And, um, you know, just being there for emergency situations, that's mm -hmm. where the money goes is, yes. you know, if I can help a mom that needs to go to dialysis three times a week, and she's going up to St. Augustine or going up to Jacksonville, and we can give her food and we can give her gas cards and make sure that she is going to her dialysis. Getting to her appointments. That's everything to those people. This is what makes them survive or helps them survive. You are changing lives and people start making me cry. But I do want to let everybody know about your donation program. So we talked briefly. You, you had mentioned gently used furniture. So if somebody is getting all new furniture from our local furniture store here, see the see Jackie Nick Nick's dad's family um, owns the local furniture store. But if somebody's getting new furniture and they have some gently used furniture, there's different things that they could do with it. But if they wanted to sow that seed into a good cause, does your company, do, do you guys um, just go and pick it up or do they have we to drop it to. off? Um, I don't have a truck. Okay, so if anybody um, so, has a truck they want to donate, and um, you would get a full write off because nice you, you are a 50C3. 501. 501. Okay, so you would be able to write that off and um, uh, count that as a donation to charity. But if somebody has a van or a truck that they would want to donate, that we can move furniture with. Um, one of our, our challenges every day is to have those volunteers. Uh, male volunteers that are with some muscle with some muscle <laughs> and um and a vehicle that we can move our furniture uh it it's not only being able to bring it to clients and sometimes someone will donate a bed or a living room set mm -hmm. and you know an hour later someone will call me and say i really need this and I can take it from that spot and, and, to, and, and you've got that point archway B. of, right. you know, someone has and someone needs and you put it together and that's what we are. That's, I mean, that's ultimately so what we do is, is be that archway that fills the needs. Fills the needs. So if somebody wanted to get on a list of volunteers, do you have a place where they can sign up and, yes. uh, okay. And where would they go to? So they can just go to Christmas come true dot org mm -hmm. and right there it says would you like to volunteer you can volunteer fill out a form that goes to our emails mm -hmm. and then i have a volunteer liz or myself that call and say what would you like to do how would you you know what hours are you available we always need volunteers for the store 
Mm -hmm. um, to help us with sales there. We always need volunteers for events. Sure. So if you'd like to sign up for events, if you like golf tournaments or poker runs, um, you know, the Crossroads does an annual uh, poker run, and they for partner us. up with the Punishers oh, as well. The motorcycle are group, the Punishers, and the I club. I love that event. Mm -hmm. I love, love that event. They're wonderful. Well, Janice has a big heart for the community, just she like does. you do. She has. She is such she a leader, so and much. um, and a woman that a, a woman that women can look up to. Mm -hmm. So now, Nadine, it almost makes me feel like, and maybe I'm off off on this that that maybe you grew up needing something when you were young because I'm I know I did. I know my mom was a single mother, and we didn't have um, all of the things available. My mom stayed home to make sure that uh, us kids were safe. Like she would, there's no way she was ever getting a job, um, just to protect us children. And that was just her mind. You know, she was a child who had children and I'm thankful for, for all those tough times. Cause that made me the person that I am today. But did you experience any of those tough times when you were no, growing as up? As a matter of fact, so my mother and father were very involved in the lion's club. Oh, and yes. my father and mother were very, very um, helpful to the community as well. We did a lot of events together. Mm -hmm. um, I remember singing at the jail, the the, <laughs> the so local jail. For so your parents Easter were and, bringing you around to the yes, jail to yeah. minister when you were young. So yeah. now so was we that were, your Christian background that was yes. okay? And what? So if you don't mind sharing, um, I grew up, uh, and I'll tell you my background. I grew up Catholic, mm -hmm. and then I moved to Tennessee to the buckle of the Bible Belt. So there I learned that there are a lot of different ways to be Christian and a lot of different labels on everything. And um, so from Pentecostal, Baptist, Southern Baptist, Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, Church of God of Prophecy in Christ. I mean, <laughs> they were all right there. I think the town that I lived in has over 100 headquarters for church wow. denominations. So I, it was really a big eye opener as far as God. It really changed my life. And God took me there after I was in New York for September 11th. So I really needed God and God showed up and brought me right there to the beautiful uh, mountains of Tennessee. So what religion did you grow up with? Or I did, uh, Catholic. Catholic. Okay. So this was through the Catholic church that you guys were going out to? No, nope. nope, it was not through the Catholic church. It was through the Lions Club. The Lions all Club. Of, all of what my father was evolved involved in and very much he was very much a part of the community yes. he was in retail yes and so um we were always able to have a beautiful christmas mm -hmm. and so um they both worked but we just always had that so i envision when we give um a, a personalized Christmas dinner, mm -hmm. which, you know, Publix works with me so much. I, it, I am so blessed to have well, them the, involved. Well, Publix is us. a great organization. And they, they really work. are through and through. And they, they have, um, I, I appreciate the good sales that they have. And I also appreciate the good products that they have as yeah, well. So they, they help us with all of the, he, they organize it, they order it, they, they pull it together. They help me. They are wow. arm in arm with me at Christmas time, which is just unbelievable. But um, kind of lost track of what I was saying. Well, I think that we you were talking about um, when you were growing up, you always had a really nice mm -hmm. Christmas. Yeah. And so, so now you want to help others right. with so that. So I envision um, being able to give a personalized Christmas dinner to a family. I envision the families waking up in the morning and mom and dad or grandmom knowing that there is a Christmas there, there's a dinner there that yes, they're struggling and they are hardly paying the rent. But today, today I have Christmas dinner today. That's I have beautiful. stockings filled with goodies today. I have new clothes today. I have a new bike for my son Today, I have what my children dreamed of having for Christmas. That's beautiful. And it just, um, to me, that is what Christmas is about. It's not about the things. Mm -hmm. It's how you make people feel. It's That's how right. you give That's right. your heart. And, you know, um, there are many times that I wish that everybody could be there <laughs> that gave to us. Everybody right. could be there the day of to distribution, see, but we are happens. very, very right. private with right. our families. And that's good. And, um, but discretion is extremely important because it's not, 
it's a humbling experience to um, receive something from someone. Yes. And yep. um, so, yes, that, I'm sure that the families very much appreciate that. Right. So I, I grew up on the other side of the spectrum. We didn't have much, but my mom always thought it was so, so, so important for Christmas. And I didn't realize that, you know, we were getting evicted in February was because of the Christmas she bought us in December. And it really gave me a different perspective as an adult when I realized that my mom did that because of the desire to have a Christmas for us and have gifts for us to open up on Christmas morning. And that as an adult, I'm like, mom, I'm, why did you do that? And she's like, well, I just felt like it was the right thing to do at the time. So, um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why I work so hard. So some people look at me and say, Kim, you just work so hard. Well, I do. It's because I grew up without anything. I saw my mom struggle to, to make ends meet. And, um, and as a kid, it's, you know, that's not fun moving <laughs> in, it, uh, every year, every couple of years, because mom, um, you know, wanted to make sure that we had a good Christmas. So, yeah. but she did. And I, you know, everything that I went through and grew up with makes me who I am today. And I'm pretty happy with the person I am today. So whether it was a struggle or it was easy, I, there were, there's been good times and there's been bad times, but I'm the same person either way because right. I've known all the extremes. So I'm good. I, like well, I you know go. who I am, which is really yeah. good. And for you to have such a heart and that, that your dad instilled that in you with the lions club. So we have a very strong lions club here. Um, the current president is Nina. Um, I always mess up her last name. Get, Giliato. And um, she she works with Lomans Funeral Home, but she also has a very, very big heart for our community. So if you want to get involved in the Lions Club as well, we can get you in touch with Nina. And and you are still looking for volunteers. So you did express that you're looking for someone who's retired and loves to do administrative assistant work. Yes. That um, now Nadine's a lot of fun to hang out with. So, but finding someone who's got a good personality that matches yours, that you guys can work together. She's looking for someone who knows some office work, some Excel, and um, can really just be her right hand person. And how many hours a week does that usually take? Uh, you know, um, we're flexible. Mm -hmm. So if there is two days a week or three days a week, if there is morning time. That's so you're talking just, eight hours or like two or three hours a I'm day? Talk, it, it just depends. It's probably about 12 hours of work a week needs okay. to be done that, um, that is something that's, you know, because of the sales and, and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But as far as uh, additional hours, it just depends. I mean, we, we can always keep people busy. <laughs> exactly. So if you are retired and you have some skills in this area and you're like, oh, I need to be doing something. Maybe you're watching this today because you're supposed to be um, an errand to Miss Nadine and to come up beside her and help her um, take some of the burden off so that so that you guys can help more families. I mean, I am so in love with what you're doing. And I just think that you are so wonderful to take your time. And really, you've dedicated your life to this for the past since I've known you the past five Five years you yeah. have just been 100 percent dedicated yeah and it is it takes it takes a lot of time you know i the hardest thing for me is i know that this is my mission yes and i love everything that i do it's just pulling people together to to help with that mission well there are other design. people who have missions out there who've been called to do something they just don't know where they're supposed to do it Right. So those people are out there, you know, God doesn't give you a vision and put you on a path. And especially with a big task, like he's given for you, um, without the people being there. So there's people out there. So if you're watching this and you're one of those people that are wondering, is this what I'm supposed to do? Get in touch with Nadine, go yeah, visit definitely. the website, christmascometrue.org and fill out the form and sit down with Nadine or go visit the store. It's right over here on East Moody Boulevard. Um, and, uh, and I love it. So now if somebody has some furniture that they want to donate, um, are they you taking tchotchkes us. and furniture and what about old jewelry? Are you doing all this stuff? No, no. I don't do old jewelry okay. or clothing. It's, okay. it's really, um, we're trying to focus on the, the gently the used furniture and the home goods, um, silverware that, you know, yes, pots and pans and things like that. Those are things that um, we are able to give to the homeless when they get a home or a family that needs those kinds of things. 
you know, we have families that are, are burnt out of their homes and suddenly yep. they need it. And Nadine swoops right in and she's there to help them. So any donation, whether it is a physical product or cash donation, is always sowing seed into good soil with Nadine. And she's always been there. I remember there was a house fire. Um, I don't know. It was in Benel somewhere. And boom, the very next day, or it might have even been that night, you were there helping the family making sure that they had everything that they needed. And um, wow, what a woman. We're so grateful. Well, the thing is, is that without the community, without everybody that helps us, we would be able to accomplish nothing. So it's it's our community coming together. And what we are is just that, you know, that connection. Do you have any yeah, special donors? Connection. I heard you mention, of course, we talked about Mezzaluna Pizza. Um, Crossroads always does a nice, um, and, and the Punishers always do a nice poker run for you. We have uh, Publix that's also doing. Is there anyone else in the community that you would love to mention? Ron Harlow with Adams Cameron. Adams um, Cameron, he yeah. always does an event for us. Uh, Rhodey's did a great event for us last year. Ah, so, I got to go there. Know, that was wonderful. Got, um, Tortugas, that is very supportive of everything that we do. They've done a lot of events. So there is a lot of, of businesses that have reached out and that help us throughout the year um, with different little events and big events. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people that put the golf carts together and, and do a little Christmas event for <laughs> us. And, you know, they raise they raised over three thousand dollars for us at, just before Christmas, which you know. You who did? did who, who did the three thousand dollars? It's a group that come together to um, it's just a do group a of golf individuals, cart, that... little golf cart parade kind of thing. Oh, and, oh, and nice! And then you have Flagler and that was Beach down at Police. that was down at Flagler Beach. Yep. Oh, I remember that. That was so cool. Yeah, that was a yeah. lot of fun. Everybody decorated. That was at Christmas time. Was that? Is and that then the we one? do. Yeah, That's and so then cool. Tracy. Callahan, she mm -hmm. always she's amazing. Yeah, yeah, she's just awesome. And we do. And a she's Halloween a local realtor. Event. She's a local realtor. She absolutely does an amazing job. Yeah, really and a lot she of has respect Flagler for her. Strong, mm -hmm. which is you know the whole community coming together when there's a crisis in yes. Flagler Beach. Um, she helps with uh, Halloween, mm -hmm. so we do a Halloween. Um, scavenger hunt every oh yeah year. so is that that's just you know those are just some examples of the way that people can help so if businesses wanted to get on the list and maybe some of their staff or employees might be available to come and help with a certain thing could a business like say hey we're thinking we want to do something with a with our you know to offer for our employees if they want to volunteer can you put us on your list sure. is that something that you would do absolutely okay yeah that's also sowing good seed and um sowing good seed for your business as well yeah so is there are there any other um specific needs that you have right now that maybe the community could help you with well we are actually um focusing on purchasing a building or land for our home Mm -hmm. We would very much like to be able to expand on on what we do, and um, be when more you say home, you mean your retail business or the retail business okay. and a home for Christmas come true, an office space, an office space, so okay. that we can expand on the uh, different programs that we want to be able to do, uh, accomplish for our community. That's beautiful. It's not just you know, it's not just a hand up. I mean, it's not a handout, it's a hand up. I love that and saying. I that is my favorite to, saying yeah. in the whole wide world. And that's why I do Cornerstone Center. Um, while um, we love to sow a good seed and help people, but it's a hand up. Let's let's get you up and out of where you're at. Let's get you onto the right track so that you can turn around and be a person that's blessing others. Because I'll tell you, there's a saying that I absolutely love. It's better to be the head than the tail. And that goes with better to be the giver than the receiver. But if you are the giver, it just be thankful that you're not the receiver and you're there to help those who are receiving. Um, and just be thankful that we're not the ones at this time. And I'm thankful for where I am in my life. And I'm especially thankful for Nadine King and Christmas Come True and her passion and vision and everything that you do for the community, because it's it's people like you um, that that are the glue that makes sure no one's falling through the cracks. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the Kim Sunshine Show today. Thank you for you, inviting me. Of course, you are like a superstar here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
You're welcome. This concludes this episode of the Kin Sunshine Show. Thank you for joining us. And tune in again next time for another fabulous adventure.